So you might remember in the first video I made of this game, I tried sending a rocket to the sun, but it didn't quite get there. I was very young and stupid at the time, and I didn't know what I was doing, but now it's been a while, so I should be able to piece something together that will make it. First things first, gotta get a little capsule, strap a lot of stuff to it so it can go far, and for this stage, we're gonna need a thruster that can handle deep space pretty well, like uh, this one, because it's the biggest one there is. This will be pretty good for the first couple of stages, but let's use some of this hydrogen stuff for deep space, and by deep space, I really mean just getting closer to the sun, which I'm not sure classifies as deep because you're going like into the center. So shallow space. In any case, we just do one of these should be fine. And then we can also get a couple of thrusters like this slapped on there like that. They should just go in here like this, but they're a little off kilter. It looks like there we go. That's looking better. And then a couple of little sepatrons like this never hurt anybody. And then we just get a little nose cone on here like this. A rocket should be good to go. But if it's going to the sun, I think it needs a little more pizzazz. <laughs> you know what? Instead of a nose cone, we could just put a heat shield on there. Just the smallest thing like that. Or there is this one that inflates. Oh, but that's huge. That doesn't even fit. Yep. <laughs> That totally works. I'm gonna do it. And since there's going to be solar energy just absolutely everywhere, why don't we just get a whole bunch of solar panels on this thing? To see how much we can get before this thing inevitably explodes. So how does this one open up? Extend. Oh, <laughs> those are huge. They're also clipping right through each other. I think that's a problem for when we're in the air and our target is right there. It looks like Valentina's ready to go. So we might as well just get this thing going. It's a pretty small rocket so the launch should be pretty quick. Oh yeah, we're definitely cruising a lot faster than that golf ball we were using. And these boosters are about to be done. So we'll detach those and then boost away with this one. Whoa, okay, we're still good. We're still going. Wow, this thing has a lot of boost behind it. Valentina's cruising at the top of the safe zone for the Gs. Oh, now it's getting a little higher. I also should have turned a long time ago. Whoa, easy, keep it, keep it together, keep it together. Stop pointing up, keep it together. Okay, and wow, that one got done really quickly. Okay. Not sure we're up high enough for this. Should have used a lot more fuel, but let's just see how we do. I can tell you right now, this thing is not big enough to get to the sun. So while we're here, why don't we just see what these solar panels do? Just open them up and they're clipping through each other making a really weird pattern. It's kind of interesting. And there they go. These things are bigger than the rocket itself. So we can just send a solar flower to the sun. That'd be cool, but not like this. So this first stage works pretty good, but we need more juice going on in here. And what better way to do that than just have more fuel? I could use that golf ball design again, but I want to try something new. Since these ones are small enough, we could stack two of these onto the same rocket. That should work pretty good for us in the early stages. My only concern now is how much time we have to burn in this stage. So I could slap more hydrogen tanks in here. Okay, you know what? I just got a really dumb idea, but I think it's going to work. Let's put some trusses together like this. And then instead of just having one golf ball, we put uh, four together like this. Crabby. That... Oh my goodness! <laughs> There's no way this thing is gonna fly, but I want it to. And then we can also strap all of these filled with solar panels. I am liking the looks of this. Now let's just spend a little bit of time tethering all this down. There we go, all that's looking stable up there. I'm really hoping this at least like takes off. I get the feeling that these things are gonna need a lot of assistance. And just get a few nose cones on all these. There we go. Uh, how's that for a thrust? Somehow it's even less. That's a little weird. You know what? They're just engineers. What do they know? I'm gonna launch this thing. And there, whoa, whoa, <laughs> that is bouncy. What are you <laughs> What is going on? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well, it, uh, it rolls really well. So, uh, you know what? If it ain't broke, then there's no need to fix it. Although I still want those gigantic solar panels on here because it's funny. That should be a brilliant display once that opens up. And you know what? There's one thing I do want to try, and it's this tiny little booster right here. It's called a bottle rocket, and I don't know. It just seems like it'd be funny to do. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, it fits. There isn't even a picture for it in the staging center. It's just a blank square. We'll slap you right up at the end. And, uh, thing still says thrust weight ratio isn't even there. So that just shows that engineers really don't know what they're talking about. We're gonna launch it. And you know what, there is room for three Kerbals in here. So we'll get Jebediah, we'll also get Tim and uh, Barnand in here. Cause his head is pointy like the rocket. And I'm sure all of them are gonna have a great time. So let's get this thing started. Oh, yep, there it goes. 
Up and the way. <laughs> I can't get over how wobbly this thing is at the start or just how heavy it is. And it's also a good idea to turn on RCS so the top just stays pointed up as best as it can. I think of all the rockets I've made in this game, this one has to be my favorite. And not just for the big golf ball on top either, but also once this thing is done with the boosters, they just separate in the most glorious fashion. I love it. And okay, we're starting to lose center here. This isn't good. This isn't good. That RCS needs to put in overtime for this. Okay, uh, kind of working. We're going south now for whatever reason. But now we're returning to center. Good. We can maybe tip this thing now. Very slowly and casually. And now we're starting to spin for whatever reason. I'm trying to get this thing pointed where I want it to. Okay, that's better now. Just don't get too crazy with it. Just stay right here. There we go. Now we can point pro grade. That's close enough. And we're keeping pretty stable with it. I'm a little nervous to leave these guys unoccupied while I look at the map. So I'll just wait till the boosters are done. Separate them so we we have less weight. And how are we looking? Oh man, we're not getting up very high at all. Time for more boosters. And now we're continuing to go up. Although I didn't burn at Apoapsis, so this is taking a little bit longer. I just don't think I can pull those kind of maneuvers when this entire rocket runs on boosters for the longest time. But now it's wrapping around. We're getting close to an orbit and these boosters just got done. So we'll take off those. And then this next one should take us the rest of the way to an orbit. And then we broke the sound because we were looking at the map. But here we go there's an orbit the lowest possible orbit and yeah, this is just kind of what we do now and now the apoapsis is pushing out this way we might wrap with the moon for a little bit uh nope we're just gonna miss it entirely and bammo and we're still burning so how much is that affecting here okay it's kind of just moving the center of orbit a little bit to that way so the apoapsis is up here once we get there we'll burn retro down to here and now that just got done burning so let's separate so we can be done with it and now the rest of this flight is just going to be burning that apoapsis so we can get the periapsis way close to the sun because i'm honestly not sure if there is going to be a collision with this thing like it looks solid here but i've also been fooled before by moho also funnily enough you see it here and now you don't in any case let's leave kerbin behind until we are done with the kerbin sphere of influence and then we'll wrap around the apoapsis we almost got to around. duna with it too okay there we passed the apoapsis by accident so let's just point our big old golf ball retrograde and then start burning there we can hear it i love that sound very gradually pulling in the periapsis but we're also way past apoapsis now so why don't we stop this burn right here and then when we come around again i'll burn once more we're just doing like a reverse gravity assist with this thing but now we wrap around like so Woo. And uh, <laughs> Barnett was freaking out a little bit there, but I guess he calmed down. Oh, we're also out of the RCS fuel. Whoops. I didn't realize I left that burning all this time. I don't think it matters too much because we can still move this thing ever so slightly. But now we're about an hour away from the apoapsis. So let's just start burning this for a little bit. And then we can start pointing this thing prograde. And the sun is all oh, so bright right there. Let's warp over here to apoapsis. And then we'll do what we were doing, which is burning retrograde. Okay, now the periapsis is getting within moho's orbit but it also feels like it was slowing down compared to before i can't even tell how much i would need to burn in order to get there because like i tried this the maneuver planner and there's absolutely nothing showing up so we're just winging it now i'm starting to wonder if burning retrograde and only retrograde is the best course of action for this because there's also these radial in or out which i know also affects the orbit but I'm not sure how. And we still have 30 tons of fuel left. I'm feeling really good about this. And then once we verify we're on a collision course with it, we'll open up all these solar panels in celebration. And that's getting super close too. I can't imagine the gravity assist at less than a million kilometers from the sun. The other thing that's curious about this is there's no heat in the game yet. So we could really get like right close to the surface and not have to worry about anything. This is looking really good. 500 kilometers from the surface and we still have half the fuel tank left. It also almost looks like our speed's going to drop to zero. I was wondering if that would happen, but I wasn't sure. Oh man, I'm starting to see texture on the sun because this is how close you can keep the map. 200,000 kilometers. Oh man, this thing's gonna drop to meters and it is gonna be the weirdest looking thing. Less than 100 kilometers to the sun, 20,000. And, oh, oh, there it is. There it is, there it is. These guys are on their way to the sun. Oh boy, 
I have no idea what this is gonna do, but I'm excited for it. We still have so much Delta V left too. I almost just want to burn the rest of it and see where we end up. It's moving the collision point around the surface of the sun. We're going less than a thousand meters a second here. So maybe I was right. We will be dropping pretty much just straight down. Eventually this retrograde is gonna wrap around too. So I gotta cut off the throttle when it does that, but we're going 600 meters a second. Oh, it's starting to move. Man, we're gonna get this thing to a dead stop. Being at a standstill in space would be like the weirdest thing I feel like because like everything moves in space relative to one another but if you're like the only point that isn't moving less than 100 meters a second now less than 50 and oh yep retrogrades moving Ooh. oh look at that 0.7 meters a second now I almost want to get this to zero before it ramps up as we get closer to the sun go because go <laughs> go Look at the apoapsis. It just, it's just freaking out. It doesn't, am I past it? Am I in front of it? I don't know. What's it doing? And yep, it's just a straight line towards the sun. That is ridiculous. This is also ridiculous. The flight path line is just getting torn right now. And these guys are none the wiser. But now we can get this thing pointed straight at the sun like so. And it looks like the bell neck doesn't exist from here. But then it's like, there it is. Now that it's like this, I want to open up the solar panels. This is going to be the coolest looking thing. I can already tell oh yes Ooh, that's satisfying oh that is beautiful and now the solar panels twist around to look directly at the sun Ooh, i like that definitely one of the most satisfying curl moments ever and tim is excited about it speaking of can we see them in there uh hey guys there he is and even from this angle ooh, look at that just a weird pine cone of solar panels but i like it but then as we speed time up and they pick up speed once more oh man i wonder how fast they're gonna go when they crash now we're inside kerbin's orbit we know what this looks like oh wait here's Kerbin's over there's the booster from before okay whoa it's really speeding up now uh what number is that Ten thousand meters a second getting into eve's orbit sun is getting bigger go a little bit faster not too much faster for time because acceleration is ramping up and then we're gonna get close to moho's orbit we've been here before the sun is super bright no need for sas to be on anymore but now we're at moho's point of orbit and yep the sun is huge but we can still block it out with the thing so once the sun gets past this size it's gonna be really impossible to see what's going on i feel like at least not directly because that is blinding right there and these solar panels are just soaking up all of it you can see the sun getting brighter on the edges of the cockpit and now they're going almost thirty thousand meters a second is the sun any bigger oh it's still getting blocked but oh gosh that is instant <laughs> But it still looks just as bright on here. Nothing's getting washed out at all. And whoa. <laughs> hey, guys. I didn't realize I could get the camera this close to them. Yeah, look at that. There's Tim over there and then Jebediah and then Barney with his glasses. Oh, man. You know how you fry ants under a magnifying glass? I feel like that's what is happening to Barnan's eyes right now. But hey, they're all having a great time. We're going to go a little more till we're about half of this. I'm really worried about how fast I can let the time warp go because they're just getting closer and closer to the sun at faster and faster rates. This is just as bright. Gonna do it carefully. Oh, look at that. You can see the edge of it. But if I tilt it up more. Oh, oh, wow. It's bigger than the, 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 the ball now. It's not even blinding at this point. What? So let's just keep going like this. Oh boy, it's gonna be funny if you just pass right through the sun because you're not even supposed to collide with it. Unless it's gonna be like Jewel, where if you get below the cloud surface and you know, you just go kaput anyway. Okay, we're less than 100 kilometers from the surface. That is weird looking. I feel like we're gonna get very close to it. Oh boy, this is... <laughs> oh, I don't know how to think about this. Oh, but now we're at ground camera now. Oh boy. Okay, so I guess this means, yes, the sun does have an atmosphere. They're now less than a thousand kilometers away. It's just orange now. <laughs> now we're less... Oh gosh, oh. Bruh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, I was right. The sun doesn't exist. The <laughs> party's freaking out. <laughs> he was not ready for this. Okay. So uh, what happens now? <laughs> there, Jemadai and Tim are like, uh, now what? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> oh, this game is so ridiculous. Oh, uh. <laughs> he took a breath. So where are they now? They're straight up in the 
center of the sun. They zipped past it. Oh, now they're gonna... Are they gonna go out that way now? Are we just slingshotting with the sun forever? Though if it does slingshot us, I think that's enough velocity to actually escape the solar system this time. Like, we were going to that one video ago, but here it's like certain. I am glad we're exploring all this now, though, before they add heat to the game, because there's no way they'd let you get this close to the sun if that was the case. Although the good news is I can retract the solar panels, and then we can enjoy that opening routine over and over and over again, because that has got to be the most satisfying thing. And then they all spin around to face the, well, they can't exactly face the sun anymore because the sun is kind of everywhere, but there's still light coming from wherever is at the bottom of this. And going at four times speed is making this a very slow process. But I'm going to stick around though. I want to see what happens. So while I'm zipping closer to the periapsis point, I'll just let you guys enjoy Barney freaking out like he is. Okay, they're definitely getting closer. They're only five minutes from the periapsis now. And it's really anyone's guess what's going to happen once they get there. And now they're also going 200 kilometers a second. That is ridiculous speeds. Ludicrous even. So I wonder if that periapsis point is where the light's actually coming from. Oh man, they're, s they're getting all the Gs. Look at them. They're on the verge of passing out. They all are. They're passing 600 kilometers a second. Oh my gosh, they're speeding up so much. How far away are they? Eh, whoa, what is happening? Whoa! <laughs> what happened to them? Wow, they all just passed out or something. What is... <laughs> wow, they had the Gs of a lifetime. Oh, gosh. Now they're going 10,000 kilometers a second. Where are they now? They are rapidly leaving the sun. This is at one time speed. I'm not even speeding this up at all. Okay, they're about to leave the sun. I want to see this. Their ship is also spinning uncontrollably, mostly because I turned SAS off. But whoa, there's the sun. Wow. I think this is how you leave the solar system properly. I think at this point, the sun is going to... Yep, it's brightening up to its usual state. And then it's probably going to be blinding again. Okay, but right now, I want to retract the solar panels just so I can see that a uh, golf ball eclipses the sun all the way. It's really cool to see them wrap up like that too. That is a cool sight to see. The sun here, we can see it as a ball, but if I move down here, that's when it starts to get bright. That's very interesting. So it, must, it really is that periapsis point where all the light comes from. At whoa, oh, whoa, there's a proper eclipse. It's not even the full golf ball's fault. It just did that and then bam, and then we're gone and then it comes back and it's gone so these guys have definitely seen things no Kerbal was supposed to see and they'll take that seeker with them wherever they go so i think this is where i'm gonna leave this video hope you guys enjoyed that weird adventure if there's any more weird secrets like that in the game that you want me to check out then be sure to let me know again thank you very much for watching and sub to intern and i do want to thank the channel members including bread dakota c mr cripple one ancient elixir one corby farm destructo man bladed archer donamoto deviant X, Muffin Stuffer, Lucas S, Ali B, Splatter Sacks, The Real Nickname, Edward, Eyeballus, and Hateful Herald.